This is the brand new Audi e-tron, Audi's first ever production electric car, and it's hugely significant. That's because if Audi wants to be taken seriously in this segment, then its first effort has to be pretty good. Even though it feels like the premium electric SUV segment has only just been created, it's already hugely competitive. So now you've got electric cars like the Tesla Model X and Jaguar I-Pace battling for sales, and the Mercedes EQC has just arrived too. All big electric cars with impressive electric ranges and a desirable badge on the nose. So is the Audi e-tron now the best electric SUV on sale? And how far will it really go on a full charge? Well, that's what we're gonna find out in this video. And remember, please subscribe to our channel because we're gonna be doing loads more new car reviews, group tests, and first looks just like this in the future. And if you want to buy a new car, whether it's electric, petrol, diesel, hybrid, anything whatsoever on whatcar.com, we can help you do exactly that. So go to the new car buying section on our website to see the list of all the very best new car deals. Now, to give you some context on just how big the e-tron is, it sits between the Q5 and the Q7 in Audi's lineup. And the dimensions mean that it's taller, longer, and wider than a Jaguar I-Pace. And in terms of a styling perspective, well, you can see that it's very Audi, isn't it? I mean, even though this was their first ever electric car, they've been fairly restrained, to say the least, in their designing of the e-tron. So it looks pretty much like a lot of the other Audi SUVs in the lineup. But there are some design features that help it stand out a little bit from the rest of Audi's lineup, like these lights at the front. The grille is slightly different too, although upon closer inspection, it's a bit plasticky looking and feeling. You've also got these strong creases on the bonnet. Down here, you've got the e-tron name. And also on the key, you have e-tron written on it as well, just in case you forget what you're driving. And you can see over here, the alloy design is quite interesting as well. And these four lines on the side pick out the four lines that you can see on the headlights as well. One other design feature that is not only interesting, but very useful as well, is that there are two charge ports, one on either side, which is quite rare for electric cars. So to open the thing, you have to press this part of the design that absolutely does not look like a button, but it is a button. And if you didn't know it was there, you'd be here for about three hours trying to open it. Press that very simply and just like that, it opens the charge port and you can do exactly the same on the other side as well. And then to close it again, you just have to press the button that doesn't look like a button. So outside, it's fairly restrained, does look quite nice, but nothing that outlandish. I wonder if the interior is any more exciting and different. Well, the interior has a pretty similar story to the exterior. So that means that everywhere you look, it is pretty familiar and there's nothing really to suggest that this is some futuristic space age electric car. Everything is very Audi and we've seen lots, in fact, all of it before. But that is no bad thing because it means that build quality in the e-tron is the very best that you'll find in the electric car class. Simply, there is no other electric car that is put together quite so sturdily as the e-tron. So, everywhere you care to touch or push or jab or try and rip bits off it's incredibly sturdy and robust and the materials are all really good as well there's loads of soft touch plastics especially on the door here all these different layers are very nice and there's some nice chrome highlights and glitzy trims it's all very plush feels very expensive and well put together and the technology on offer is excellent as well. So every e-tron as standard gets a 12.3 inch digital display and that has Audi's configurable virtual cockpit as standard. Now, as standard, you have this view button that helps you cycle between a couple of different views. But if you upgrade the virtual cockpit on the e-tron, then it gives you a third view, which just gives you a bit more information about what the electric drive system is doing. Now, over here on the center console, you've got Audi's latest MMI infotainment system. Now, again, we've seen this on lots of other models before, and it's pretty much exactly the same as what you find there. The only difference is you get a few extra electric car features on this that give you some useful information about charging and how much range is left and things like that. So you have a 10.1 inch screen on top here, and below that, you've got an 8.6 inch screen. Now on top, that's where all the sort of apps and Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, radio, telephone, all the sat-nav, that's all controlled on here. And then the one below, that is for the air conditioning. And if you get sick of all these screens staring at you, you can use this button here to turn off the top screen, which is a useful feature to have. In other older Audis that had the previous MMI system, 
a lot of the time the screens would be able to pop out of the dashboard and then go back into the dashboard if you didn't want to see them. As for the system itself, well, we've said this many times before, but wouldn't it just be better if we could have a rotary dial and some physical shortcut buttons? So this is a very good system. The technology is really good. The screen is reasonably responsive. It can be a little bit laggy. It's not too bad though, but it would just be much simpler to use on the move if you had something you could actually hold and press rather than this kind of haptic feedback solution that Audi's gone for. There's no problem with the driving position either. So as standard, you get electrically adjustable seats and what's really good, you get four-way adjustable lumbar support too. So it's really good having that. And you also sit noticeably higher than you do in a Jaguar I-Pace, but that's more of a subjective thing. You might prefer that or you might prefer a lower slung driving position. Visibility all round is really good as well. However, the rear pillars are a little bit thick, but you do at least get parking sensors and a reversing camera as standard. Plus, you can get a 360 degree camera and I'll just show you now, another cool feature you can have is if you put the car in reverse, this button in the corner of the screen, can turn it into a 3D view of the car, which makes it look like you're in a video game and it's quite cool, bit of a gimmick, but perhaps might be useful sometimes. If you spec virtual door mirrors, the conventional mirrors are replaced by cameras and these display their images on door mounted screens that are positioned a little lower than they ideally would be. But which would you buy? The Audi e-tron, Tesla Model X, Jaguar I-Pace, or would you actually rather just have a diesel BMW X5? As for the space, there's loads up front, even with a panoramic sunroof, there is plenty of headroom, loads of legroom, good adjustability in the steering wheel as well, which is electrically controlled. It's a bit on the slow side, but then all those electrically adjustable steering wheels are. And the storage that you get on offer is decent as well. So you have door bins down here, which are a good size for a water bottle, but they do go back incredibly far. And right at the back of them, it's very difficult to reach. So if you end up putting your keys down there and they slip right to the back, they're gonna be quite difficult to get back out again. Anyway, on the center console here, you have this fairly modest size storage space in the center console with a hole through there, which leads through to this in front of it. Now, the design of this does look a little bit strange, I think. I'm not really sure why they've got these kind of grab handle spaces in between this. Maybe it would have been a bit sleeker if they put a cover over this top here. But still, this is what you get and you have a wireless phone charging thing down here and you can put your phone in sideways to do that. A 12 volt socket, a couple of USB ports, an SD card and a SIM card even. And then underneath here, you have two cup holders which you can pop in and out of place. That's pretty much it in the middle. You'll notice here at the front of the center console, there's a new design for the gear selector. So you simply rest your hand on this and just push it forwards and backwards or press the park button to operate it. Quite simple, really nice. I wonder if we'll see it on other Audis in the future as well. Space in the back of the e-tron is very generous indeed. Certainly enough for a couple of six footers to be very comfortable over pretty much any length of journey. So loads of legroom, loads of headroom as well, even with a panoramic sunroof fitted. And compared to the I-Pace, it feels a bit more airy back here. That's because the Jaguar has that roof line which swoops down quite dramatically at the back and you don't have that in the e-tron. So it just means it feels like you have a little bit more headroom. And you also get these storage nets here, as well as the door bins that are a decent size for a water bottle. And in the center console here, you can see that it cuts back into the space quite a lot, but it's to house this haptic feedback style touchscreen type air conditioning unit down here, which is good, unless you're sat in the middle seat. It cuts into quite a lot of the foot space on offer for that passenger. And it's actually quite hard and not particularly comfortable sat back here. And that's something we'll look at in a second, but it also means getting to those USB ports down there or the 12 volt socket is a bit trickier as well. Now, part of the reason this middle seat back feels quite so hard is actually because there's a fair amount of gadgetry hidden in it, which I'm probably over exaggerating. I'm trying to make it sound cool. It's not really cool, but it is quite interesting. You can see hidden here are two cup holders and you also have this storage tray for receipts or very thin bits of small paper. I'm not really sure what you put in there, but still useful to have it. And if you put it all away, you can see up here, if you pull this lever, then you can pull down the entire middle row seat, which gives you really easy access to the boot, which is really useful. So it's practical and it's spacious back here. However, the one downside is that unlike the Tesla Model X, you can't get a seven seat option. The rear seats split and fold 40-20-40, which is more practical than the I-Pace's 60-40 arrangement. 
levers in the boot let you fold the e-tron's rear seats from the back of the car and while they lie at a slight angle once down there is at least no step up to them the boot space is impressive compared to other electric cars there might not be quite so much storage space on offer as a model x or model s but you will be able to fit more carry-on suitcases into the back of the e-tron than you can in an i-pace However, you can see compared to a conventional SUV, actually there's loads of space in the back. So for most families, you'll certainly have more than enough room. However, one other slight negative, this is the only car among its rivals that's got a bit of a lip at the boot entry point. So not the end of the world, but makes it not quite as practical as the other cars. However, you get some useful underfloor storage, which you can see here. And also underneath, you get this handy tray, which you can actually remove completely, which I suppose is another handy practical feature. Other things inside the boot are these tethering hooks and these storage nets either side, which are useful. And then you've got these levers to put down the rear seats as well. But being an electric car, there's no engine under the bonnet, which means that that is also a boot. However, a couple of problems with the front boot. And the first one is actually opening the thing. Now you can't with just the key. You can open the rear boot, but you can't use the front one, which is a bit annoying, especially because Tesla, you can open all the doors and both boots by just the key. So to get the trunk popped, you have to go to the traditional place on most cars and then lifting it up again with another latch under here to reveal the second problem, which is that actually this is a very small space. You can see it's fine for carrying these charging cables, but you really can't fit anything else in there. Now, compared to a Jaguar I-Pace, that also has a pretty laughably small front storage space. However, a Model S has an enormous space in the front boot as well. So it just seems a bit of a shame that both Audi and I suppose Jaguar as well couldn't have just changed the packaging slightly to offer a little bit more room in the front. But how do the numbers stack up? These are the important things to know about buying and owning the Audi e-tron. Being an electric car, one of the most important things about this car is how many miles it will travel on a full charge. Well, in our real range test, which you can read more about here, we discovered that the e-tron will manage 196 miles from a full charge in real world driving conditions. That puts it among the best electric cars we've ever tested, but it is behind its other premium electric SUV rivals at this price point. And if you're using a 150 kilowatt public charging port, of which there aren't that many, if any, around at the minute, then your e-tron will go from 0 to 80% charged in just 30 minutes. But if you're using a 11 kilowatt home charger, then to charge the battery will take eight and a half hours. The e-tron isn't cheap though, even by electric car standards. Compared to the Jaguar I-Pace, it's more expensive, and much more so when you compare it to more mainstream electric cars like the Hyundai Kona Electric and Kia e-Niro but it's cheaper than a Tesla Model X and it's predicted to have some of the strongest resale values of any car on sale. Plus, if you buy it in the UK, you get £3,500 off its list price. The list of standard equipment includes heated front seats, leather upholstery, two zone climate control and an electric tailgate. However, given the e-tron's high price, it's a little disappointing that adaptive cruise control costs extra unless you upgrade to the even pricier launch edition model. Going for the launch edition also gets you upgraded leather, privacy glass, a black exterior styling pack, the virtual door mirrors and matrix LED headlights. Like any electric car, running costs should be cheap. You'll have to pay £310 luxury car tax annually, but you won't pay road tax or the London congestion charge. There's no exhaust pipes because there's no emissions. So company car drivers will only incur a 16% benefit in kind tax rate. The Audi e-tron gets a three year 60,000 mile warranty, while its battery is covered by an eight year 100,000 mile warranty. That's pretty much what Jag offers, but Tesla don't have any mileage restriction on its battery cover. All models get automatic emergency braking and lane departure warning as standard. First edition models also get traffic sign recognition, lane changing assistance and systems that stop you pulling into oncoming traffic and even something that moves the driver's seat to the optimum position to minimise whiplash if it looks like you're about to be rear-ended. So what's the Audi e-tron like to drive? Well, it gets a 95 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery and two electric motors and those two motors together produce 402 brake horsepower. And that means that in a straight line, a 0 to 60 mile per hour time is very impressive for a car that, remember, weighs about two and a half tonnes. However, it is slower than a Jaguar I-Pace and a Model X as well. And also you can only get that maximum 402 brake horsepower in 
eight second bursts. So to get the maximum power, you have to use this gear selector, put it in S mode, and then if you plant your foot, you'll only be getting that maximum power for eight seconds. The rest of the time, you have only 355 brake horsepower, which is still quite a lot really, isn't it? But the thinking behind that, Audi thinks quite rightly, that people are gonna be more concerned about conserving battery life rather than embarrassing supercars off the line. The standard air suspension does a good job of wafting you along when it's in comfort mode. Pick some giant alloy wheels and you'll notice they pick up on road surface imperfections a bit more, but it's never intrusive enough to be irritating. How does it handle? Well, impressively, again, for a car that's this heavy, it does change direction pretty well. The steering's precise, but it doesn't quite feel as agile as an I-Pace. That really is the standout electric car in terms of handling. That and the Model S are very similar, but the e-tron just feels a little bit more sluggish in terms of shifting its weight and coping with those changes of directions than those two cars. But the e-tron really excels with its refinement. There's hardly any wind noise. Road noise is also minimal. And of course, you have the very quiet electric motors, which make far less noise than a petrol or diesel engine. Another great thing are the control weights. Normally when you slow down in a hybrid or electric car, the brakes can feel quite grabby or the pedal can feel quite inconsistent. But the feel of the brake pedal in the e-tron is one of the best in any electric or hybrid car. The accelerator pedal is consistent in its responses too. So this all means it's very easy to drive this car smoothly. The Audi e-tron is a very impressive electric car. It's incredibly quiet inside, spacious and luxurious. Plus it's comfortable too. If your budget stretches into this realm of EVs, then it should definitely be on your shortlist. For much more on the e-tron, including our extended written review of it and all of its key rivals, head to whatcar.com. And remember, if you want to buy a new car, then look at the new car buying section on our website to see how much money we could save you.